Hi guys, I'm going to be making a flat spiral stitch bracelet today. Flat spiral stitch is pretty easy. Um, so I'm just going to take you on the trip along with me and show you how to get it done. You will need 6mm round beads. Doesn't matter what kind of pearls um, I'm using. Drux today is really pretty two-tone Drux. 4 millimeter beads. You can use any shape you like for this. You can use bicone crystals. You can use, I'm using fire polish today. Um, any 4 millimeter bead you like, you can use. And I'm also using size 11 seed beads. And I have this kind of sea green palette going on today. Have my needle threaded already with a comfortable length of fire line, feel free to go ahead and thread your needle with whatever beading thread you have available, while fire, fire line, whatever. And you'll also need a clasp for this project. And so let's get started. So first I'm going to string two six millimeter beads. Oh, sorry, you can also use any shape you want for this um, in place of the six millimeter rounds as well. If you want to use six millimeter bicones, you can. So let those two six millimeter beads slide all the way down your thread, leaving about an eight to 10 inch tail. I'm just gonna measure quickly here, make sure I have good length. And that is about right. Then I'm going to pick up five size 11 seed beads. And then I'm going to pick up one four millimeter bead and five more size 11 seed beads. And that's what it's gonna look like. So I'm going to take my needle from the tail end, this is my tail here, and I'm going to go through both of those six millimeter beads. And you're just going to make a loop around those beads that will pretty much hold it in place. Now, if you, you can kind of play with the number of seed beads you add here. If you want this to be a little closer there you can add less seed beads you want it to be a little further away you can add a few more it's really up to you but I like this particular distance here and to complete the other end you're going to put another one of these loops on the other end on the other side of these two beads so we're going to repeat that pick up five size 11 seed beads one four millimeter and five more size 11 seed beads. We're going to come back around from our tail end and again go through both of those six millimeter beads and pull that. Pull that tight. And you're going to push that loop on the opposite side where your first loop is. You can just tug on both ends and that will actually help keep those beads in place. Now from here we're going to add one six millimeter bead and five again repeating our sequence five size elevens one four millimeter and five size elevens. Now you're going to let those beads drop all the way down to your work and hold that new six millimeter in place. And we're going to skip this very first six millimeter here. And again, going from the tail end upward, 
we're going to go through the very last two six millimeter beads again skipping that first six millimeter and I'm gonna pull tight and you see what happens there you now have this loop sitting on top of the very first loop that you put on there so again remember you have to complete the loop on the other side so you pick up five size 11 one four millimeter and five eleven Again, you skip that very first six millimeter and you go through the last two six millimeters. Oh, I'm getting caught. And you push that second loop over to the opposite side of where you put the one you just put on. So you're seeing how we're building on top, building the new loops on top of the last loop you put on. Now what you want to be very careful of when you're doing this particular bracelet is not to flip your work over at any point in time. Keep your work held. If you need to put it down, make sure you put it down very carefully with the very last loop you put on sitting on top, facing off your work surface. Because what will happen if you flip this over, you can see how each new loop was sitting on top of the last loop. If you add another six millimeter here now, and you add your loops, it's gonna sit on top of, the, uh, on top of this loop here but it's not going to be right. You're going to have this one on top, this one underneath, and then another one on top. And you will notice that when you finish your work. So just make sure that you keep your work so that the very last loop, the one furthest away from your tail, is on top at all times. So if you can lift it like that, you know that you have your work in the correct orientation. So just remember that as you go along. If you have to take any breaks, just remember that when you come back to your work. So I'm gonna pick up a six millimeter again, and then your five CBs, your four millimeter, and your five CBs. And again, you let that all slide down. And you hold that new six millimeter in place and you go through the very last two beads including that last six millimeter so this one and this one so you're now skipping the first two so you always push your needle through the very last two six millimeter beads and pull your thread tight And again, just go back through the very last two six millimeters, those two right there, pull your loop tight, make sure not to get it caught around the other loop, and push it to the other side. So now you've got, you've got a good idea of how your bracelet should be building on top of itself and I will continue to my desired length and you can go away and do your bracelet as well and we'll come back and I'll show you how to put on
start the class. Okay, I'm back. I am about to just put the very last loop on my bracelet. So I'm just going to go through those very last two six millimeter beads there and push that to the side. And now I'm ready to attach my clasp. So I'm just going to show you what my bracelet looks like so far. And you can see they're all laying on top of one another, all the loops. I actually did miss one of these 4mm bees along this side and ended up having to pull out all, well not you know too much, probably about 3 or 4 beads, 6mm beads to go back and put that back in because it would just look odd and very noticeable, well to me anyway. Um, so I had to go back and do that. So I'm just going to show you now how you can attach your clasp. So putting on that very last loop brings you right into position, luckily enough, to attach your clasp. So what I'm going to do is pick up five of these 11 seed beads and I'm going to pick up my clasp I already have on a jump ring over here. And let that slide down a bit. And then I'm going to pass through the very last seed bead that I put on and just pull this tight, just like that. And actually, if you really wanted to, you could just, you know, have this little stem. You could go all the way down through those seed beads and oh, let me turn it over so my last loop is facing up. Um, right, so you could just pass through all those seed beads, which will come loose, and go around your loop, come back up those core beads, and reinforce your loops again. Your um, clasp, oh, sorry. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to add, just going to pull that tight again, I'm going to add, pick up four beads, four of these seed beads. And we're going to make a little loop around here. So I'm going to go down two of my core beads, the very last two core beads. And that is going to create a little loop here for my class to hang on to, or to hang on to my class, rather. Then what I'm going to do is stitch back up one of these loops on the side. So I'm probably not going to be able to pass through all the beads in one go. And then I'm going to stitch back up my clasp and reinforce those beads there. And back down through the last seed bead. And back down those four beads on the other side. And then back down my core beads. And you can reinforce that again if you want to. Then I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, not gonna reinforce it again. What I'm gonna do now is show you how to end your thread. Um, but first, I just want to point out to anyone that this may bother, doesn't bother me, but you know, it may bother you. The last of your loops can lift, you know, lift up into the air like that as you're wearing the bracelet. If that really does bother you, what you can do is stitch through your um, beads on the side there and then kind of line it up. I'm going to bring it in a little bit closer. Line up your um, last loop next to the one before it and see where the bees kind of line up and maybe those two will go really well there. 
Um, I don't know. Let me can zoom in a little bit closer. Um, what you can do is you stitch up through that last loop and you stitch around and stitch down through this next loop and that will fasten this last loop to that one and you it won't be able to flap around like that and you repeat the same thing on the other side so you stitch back up through your core bead back to this side now and you stitch through those beads and then find a bead where it kind of lines up next to and then stitch back down the loop before it and back down there and you can do that on both sides and it will stop your loops from flapping around but like I said it really doesn't bother me so <laughs> I'm just gonna zoom back out just a teensy bit and show you how to end this thread off so your thread is now coming out of your core beads your six millimeter beads and you can just really get under there and catch the thread and just make sure that it's not getting caught on one of your loops pull gently and make a knot just like that and then of course you always stitch down just make sure again it doesn't get caught on anything and you repeat that so just push your needle behind the thread in your core beads between your core beads and just tie a knot I'll do it one more time. You don't have to skip two beads every time. You can skip one, you can skip two, whatever you want. And uh, you again push your needle behind your thread. Pull a loop, put your needle through, and tie a knot. And just be really careful when you're tying that knot that it the thread doesn't get caught in your seed beads or one of your loops or something like that and then I'm just gonna take my needle down through a couple more beads pull it tight and get my thread burner and just trim that thread really close there okay and you just repeat that for the other side of your bracelet to attach your clasp um, for this bracelet, I made uh, this centerpiece about, I think it's about six and a half inches long. I wear a seven, let me just put it there so you can see in the end bit. About six and a half is just about where my bracelet base would have ended. I wear my bracelet about seven and a half inches long. So you do have to be mindful of how long your clasp is. I'm just using a regular lobster clasp um, with a jump ring. And I'm going to use a small jump ring for the other side of my bracelet. Um, so I'm going to do the loop the same way and attach the jump ring so that my lobster clasp has something to hold on to on that side. Um, what you, you what you have to consider sorry i'm losing my train of thought what you have to consider is the length of your clasp if you're using a toggle clasp or one of those s hooks uh, or you know any any sort of fancy clasp you will have to consider the length of that because toggle clasps can get quite big um so whereas i might just have to um, leave about let's see here about half an inch for my clasp on this side and you know, I usually estimate about an inch if I'm using a lobster clasp because by the time I put in the beads on the other side as well I'll have I'll take up about an inch I'll add about an inch to my bracelet so 
measure your toggle class or whatever class you're using and just be mindful of the length that you'll need to take away from your bracelet so that when you put on that class it's not too big okay so I'm gonna finish off this end and my bracelet will be complete I hope you enjoyed this tutorial I enjoyed showing it to you and happy beading share your comments subscribe click the link below subscribe like the video share it with your friends and just have a great time beading thank you so much for watching bye bye